Hi, everybody, and welcome to our August Lunch and Learn. Um, today, we are joined by Berkshire Farm Center and Services for Youth to talk a little bit about their programming. Uh, my name is Ray Glazer. I am the director of the New York State Kinship Navigator Program. I'm going to kick us off just with some information about the Lunch and Learns and the Navigator, and then I will turn it over to Lauren Murphy, who will be running our show today. Uh, so just a few housekeeping things. Everybody is on mute. Uh, this is webinar format. So if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to drop them in the chat. I will read them off to Lauren as we receive them, or we'll try to keep a couple of minutes for questions at the end. Um, the PowerPoint from today, as well as the recording, will be available to all participants after the webinar and will also be on the Kinship Navigator YouTube page. Um, here's just a little bit of information about our Lunch and Learn series. As many of you already know, we hold them on the third Thursday of the month from 12 to 1230. Um, every recording is available on the Kinship Navigator YouTube channel, uh, as well as our online videos on the Navigator website. Um, next month, we will be foregoing our formal Lunch and Learn, um, as is our Kinship Care Month celebration in Albany. Uh, it is September 19th at 11.30 at the Desmond in Albany in person. So feel free to register for that. Uh, you'll get the registration link along with this PowerPoint. It is also available right on the homepage of the Navigator website. The Kinship Navigator, in case you're not familiar, we are information, referral, and education for kinship caregivers all across New York State. Uh, we provide general information, on common caregiving themes such as financial assistance, legal rights and options, school enrollment, obtaining official documents, as well as referrals to local kinship programs, permanency resource centers, and other area agencies uh, that provide support services for caregivers. Just a general snapshot of our information referral and education. We provide services to caregivers. It does not matter what type of formal legal designation they have or non-formal if they are informally caring. Uh, prospective caregivers, family, friends, professionals, uh, everybody. We also provide education in the form of these Lunch and Learns, um, but also Kinship 101, Kinship Financial Options, Kinship Legal Options. Uh, we can do those via Zoom or we can come out to your community and present. Uh, we also co-chair the KinCare Coalition, uh, which meets on the third Tuesday of every month at 1 p.m. Uh, right now, we are in the midst of discussing Kinship Care Month and programmatic activities, but in a couple of months, we will pivot to talk about the 2024 policy season, which includes the kinship budget as well as specific legislative items. If you're interested, feel free to either shoot me an email or you can join right on the KinCareCoalition.org website. Here's just a general snapshot of our website. Um, on the Navigator site, we have county resources. Uh, you filter out by county the type of resource you're looking for, kinship resources, legal, aging, uh, youth. If you are a professional and you don't see yourself on there, feel free to shoot me an email and we will put you right on our resource list. Uh, we also have upcoming events. We have an online chat feature and we have legal fact sheets for kinship caregivers and professionals on common kinship issues, such as how to get financial assistance, what are the different legal options, how to enroll a child in school and things of that nature. Uh, we also do have online videos for caregivers if you would prefer to see that information uh, in front of you visually rather than a fact sheet right on our online education. We offer virtual case management in addition to information referral and education. Um, right now, we offer those in 10 different counties. If you are a kinship caregiver, working with a kinship caregiver, you don't have to do anything special for that. Just give the helpline a call and we will offer the services to you. Uh, what that entails is working with a virtual case manager one-on-one -on -one for up to six months to receive assistance, um, facilitated assistance with online benefits applications, more in-depth information on your legal rights, legal options, uh, local resources, and just some general support. Uh, not in person, unfortunately, um, but more than information and referral. So if you're interested in virtual case management, you know somebody that is, just give her a helpline a call. 
or you can use our permission to contact form. Uh, permission to contact form is also right on our website. If you are working with a kinship caregiver, you are always welcome to give them our phone number. But if you think that that caregiver might be under a lot of stress, might not give us a call of their own volition, um, you can absolutely fill out this form with them. It gives the navigator permission to contact that caregiver directly. So you fill out the form with the caregiver, you can email it or fax it to us. It goes right to the navigator email um, and we will return that phone call within two business days, in most cases, the same business day. The caregiver can decide how they would like to be contacted, whether it would be cell phone, home phone, snail mail, email, whatever they would like, um, and also the time of the day that they would prefer to be contacted and we will reach right out to them. If you have any questions about Navigator, virtual case management, permission to contact form, please feel free to correct, uh, connect me uh, via email. My email will be right in the PowerPoint as well. Um, but many of you are very familiar with what the Navigator does. At this point in time, I want to turn it over to Lauren Murphy, who works for Berkshire Farm Center and Services for You, to talk a little bit more about the services that they provide. So over to you, Lauren. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I'm just going to pull up my screen here. I see it, Lauren. You're good to go. All right. Thank you. I am Lauren Murphy, and I'm the Assistant Director of Foster Care for our Central Region, which is Syracuse and our Binghamton offices um, for Berkshire Farms. Our Syracuse address is there, as well as our Binghamton address and the office phone numbers. My cell phone number and email is there as well, so you'll get that on the slides um, when they're sent to you if you need to contact me or either office. So our mission is to strengthen children and families so that they can live safely and independently and productively within their home communities. Our goals are safety, permanency, and well-being for the children in our programs. We are funded by OCFS and that is our oversight agency. We do have contracts with most counties, um, 53 counties across New York State for youth that are referred for placement. And then we determine the level of their youth's need once we get the referral and if we can service them. We are also an accredited agency by the Council of Accreditation, and they hold us to a higher standard. So our paperwork and um, documentation is above and beyond what OCFS regulations are. Um, we are a therapeutic foster care service, um, which is what I oversee. We, there currently are 17,000 children in foster care in New York State and more than 6,000 coming in every year. 2,000 are the number of children and families that we at Berkshire serve every day. So what is foster care? It's when children are provided with a safe, nurturing, loving family for a temporary period of time while working towards reunification and permanency. Therapeutic foster care is the safe temporary home for children in need, whether it be on a part-time or a full-time basis. The primary goal of therapeutic care is reunification with the birth parents. The caregivers do receive additional special training and support to be part of our care team and respond to the needs of higher needs of children in their home, and the children receive a higher degree of care and support within our program. We provide a trauma-informed care model for all staff, youth, birth families, and foster families through the sanctuary model. And we work with the children and families to overcome those past traumas so that they can live safely and take control of their lives. These are the top four reasons that children are placed into foster care, neglect, parents drug abuse, parents inability to cope, and physical abuse.
Regarding the foster parents, they do change lives, the children and their own. We do certify foster only, foster and adoptive, and kinship families, which I'll go into a little bit more later. But all of our foster, adoptive, and kinship parents complete the certification training, very extensive background checks, which is child protective, criminal history, um, and paperwork before becoming approved and certified. We also have what's called an internal panel meeting throughout uh, the directors and staff to determine if families are approved to move forward with becoming certified. They then complete certification, recertification annually, and we require our foster homes to have 12 hours of training per year. Our foster parents are not only the key to our program, but the glue that prevents disruptions and increases quality of services for the youth and the families. These are our steps to becoming a foster parent, non-kin foster parent. They would fill out our foster parent inquiry form, which can be found on our BerkshireFarm.org website. A home finder will speak to the person that is interested in becoming a foster parent from the area that they are. They will then meet with a home finder for orientation and then complete the foster parent application. Once they get through those steps, then there will be a MAP training class that they will attend which is now going to be transferring to uh, NTDC, which is National Training Development Curriculum, um, within the next year, which is trauma-informed training. And then they complete the certification process. And once they are fully certified, they will get their first placement. So if anybody is interested in becoming a foster parent for Berkshire Farms, our website is berkshirefarm.org. You click on the link to become a foster parent and fill out the inquiry form. That will go to the local office. The steps to become an emergency kinship foster parent. Um, kinship care is grandparents, aunts, uncles, family members, or a community member who has a significant relationship with the child and agrees to care for the child or children. They're called kinship caregivers. The process can be immediate if immediate emergency placement is needed for the youth with a opening immediately that day as approved by the county. And then there is 90 days after the emergency opening for full certification to occur, which includes the training hours and paperwork, as well as background checks. For our team, we have family specialists who are the direct workers that work with the youth and the families and the birth parents. They're responsible for supporting the permanency of the children through the fam family time, family visits, youth services, and the foster home support. Their average caseload is around 10, with six being therapeutic and some 12 being treatment. Treatment is for those youth that don't have a higher level of care needed, but they do need a foster home or they are a sibling of a child that does need a higher level of care. So we try to keep them in the same foster home and service the youth in the same program and home. So they do not have to be separated. A typical day for family specialists would be them being in the field with the youth, the foster family and the birth families and visits often are in the evening after school hours after work hours parent first foster parents work hours birth parent work hours so their schedules are typically very flexible 
Our home finders are responsible for the recruitment of foster parents, the certification, compliance, training and retaining our foster homes, as well as matching the youth for the foster homes for placement to occur. They also support the foster parents with the foster youth after placement as well, is being working as a team with the family specialists. Their average caseload is 30 homes, but it can vary by region as well. A typical day for a home finder is different. It varies by their schedule because they do a lot of trainings in the evenings and weekends and recruiting activities on the weekends as well. Additional members of our team, our family specialists are also on call. We are have a 24 seven on call service throughout the entire state. We have a community care specialist who also helps out with family time, transportation of the youth and assisting our family specialists. Each of our offices have an administrative assistant that also helps with handling phone calls, paperwork, keeping the team together. They're usually always the glue to our offices. And then we have program coordinators out of each office. They are the supervisors of the home finders and family specialists. We have assistant directors and directors throughout each office. And then we have a vice president of foster care who oversees all of the offices for the entire state. Our program coordinators, directors, and vice president are also on call 24 seven as well. And then we have a CPIC or um, quality assurance worker for our home finding department that audits and ensures compliance with all of the paperwork. And then we have an assistant director of home finding that oversees all of the quality assurance workers as well. This would be the makeup of our youth team. We have the biological parent. They each have a clinician that would, is assigned to them in each office. We have a nurse that's assigned to them. We have a care manager medical liaison, which is our MMC team. We have the foster parent, the foster care family specialist, our community care specialist, and the home finder. A little bit more about our clinician and clinical services. They provide behavioral health services. They are also on call 24-7 for clinical support. They help provide crisis support in real time. They also provide individual and family therapy. That can include the family, the foster parents for family support, supporting them with the youth that may have some challenging behaviors in their home. They help facilitate a hospitalization intake and discharge planning for psychiatric hospitalizations. They also provide foster parent trainings twice a month. And there's also a psychiatric nurse practitioner that we have that meets with the youth monthly to manage their psychiatric medication needs and assess it for any changes. We also have a clinical psychologist on staff who uses the trauma-informed practices to complete psychological evaluations for the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of mental health and behavioral disorders for foster youth and provides treatment recommendations. They also assist the treatment team members with evaluating a youth for level of difficulty. And they also provide the SED or complex trauma assessment for care management, evaluation and appropriateness for their quali qualifying conditions. They will also provide court letters related to their completed evaluations for children in foster care if it is required or requested by the court. For our nurses, 
Their role is to provide the medical case management, and they're responsible to oversee our medical, dental, and developmental needs of our foster youth. They provide a 24-hour initial health screening and HIV screening when children are first placed within our program. They ensure that medical records and releases of information, as well as medications, consents, are in place for the youth, and we are in compliance with HIPAA regulations. They complete an initial medical assessment, dental, family planning, education, and developmental assessment on all of the youth to determine further needs. They also ensure that our youth and foster parents have access to health care and treatment and collaborate with the birth family as well. They collect and manage our health care data and information for all of our youth and enter it into our system, which is called Evolve. They provide training and education for our youth, our foster parents and birth parents as needed and appropriate as well. They monitor and evaluate and refer youth as needed by following up after every medical appointment with the foster parents and birth parents. They are also on call 24 seven. For our children's health home care management, they their goal is to better health outcomes for children based upon cross systems connectivity to the vital resources. They are overseen by the State Department of Health and the Health Home or CHUNY program. They must have Medicaid in order to qualify and have qualifying medical conditions in order to be eligible for care management services. All children that enter Berkshire Farm are referred for care management services and the care managers to de determine their eligibility for the program. Care managers then meet with the children and the families at least once a month. However, care managers do also take outside referrals from other agencies. They do not just work with our foster youth. They do, they do have the capability of remaining with the children after they are also discharged until they are 21, as long as they remain eligible. The care manager's tasks are also flexible and they vary depending on the needs of the individual child and the family. And then our managed care liaisons, the goal with them is to coordinate the access to health care for children in foster care with the man Medicaid managed care plans. When the children are placed in our program and throughout placement, they help maintain eligibility for Medicaid and other public health insurance or private health insurance as well. And then upon discharge, they help arrange for health insurance when they re are discharged either to their parents or um, in a, another permanent um, living arrangement. The other programs throughout Berkshire Farms, we have family preservation or preventive services that work with families in crisis and at risk of separation and being children being placed in foster care. They partner with the parents to educate, support, and strengthen the families where they need us the most in their homes, schools, and communities. We also have group homes for children that are a higher need than therapeutic level of foster care. They provide trauma-informed care for youth who struggle in their home and community, and through life skills, they empower youth to be their best and work towards future goals of independence. They, we also work closely with the group homes in the foster care program to help children step down to a lower level of care if it is um, safe for them to do so. We also have detention services where they provide youth safe and secure setting um, by virtue of their choice and their circumstance, which would be if the youth have committed a crime and they are court ordered to detention. 
because of that crime and they're adjudicated a juvenile delinquent. Our program provides an opportunity to choose a better path with new education opportunities, community resources, and trauma-informed care. And then we have our Sheltered Hearts program, which provides a short-term shelter for unaccompanied minor youth. And they work diligently to identify family members or sponsors within the United States. That is our program. And these are our offices throughout the state of New York. Again, Central is where I oversee. Our director for Central is Victoria Hayek. Our Western region and Buffalo, Victoria oversees. We also have our Southern region, which is Long Island and Middletown. Our capital region, which is Albany, Schoharie, Schenectady, and Rensselaer. Our capital region also is Poughkeepsie and Hudson. And our Northern region is Hudson Falls and Plattsburgh, as well as Essex. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. That was amazing. Does anybody have any questions for Lauren about Berkshire Farm Services? I'd say we have a quiet group today, but we always have a pretty quiet group because I mute them. Um, One question. <laughs> it looks like we do have Deb Donnelly's got a question. Go right ahead, Deb, if you could type it in the chat. Um, can you direct refer to a group home? I am not sure exactly what your question means. Uh, I think what she's looking for is if she's got a client, is she able to do a direct referral that way? Referrals typically come from the county and the county would then do a referral to the group home. If you have a family in SPOA and not doing well at home, so just for some um, context, Lauren, Deb, uh, Deb Donnelly runs one of the local kinship services programs, so it would be a kinship family. And uh, oh. one that I would assume, and Deb, correct me, is probably not involved with child welfare services. Um, so for the group homes, they are not mental health placements, um, so that would be have to go through the foster care route in order for group home placement to occur. Sometimes there are contracts with specific mental health programs, but I would have to get back to you if you wanted more details about that. I'm not very certain if we do have any contracts like that or not. Okay, Deb, maybe if you wanna reach out directly to Lauren, that would be great. Um, Lauren, one of the pitfalls that we have is a lot of the families that these programs work with, including the Navigator, do not have any type of uh, formal connection to child welfare services. Um, they're either caring informally outside of child welfare or um, they've had some involvement, but no formal removal was done. Uh, so sometimes that's a bit of a barrier to our families. Um, but Deb, if you want to reach out directly to Lauren, she can help guide you in your situation. And also, if um, there are kinship families caring for the youth um, and the families were interested in becoming certified as a foster kinship foster home, there is a non-emergency process that they can also go through um, that would have to also be approved by the local district. But you could also still reach out to or the family could also still reach out directly to Berkshire with an inquiry and they can explain that process directly um, by office as well. I'd definitely be interested in learning more about that. Probably a lot of people on our line would be as well, because a lot of our families either have not had that interaction or they've not been offered the option to become a foster family. Um, you know, and, and I know with the navigator, we're always, uh, we give them all of their options, you know, so we don't tell them what to do. But a lot of times foster care is completely off the table because there's not been a formal removal from the parents. So um, any insight or assistance that you're able to provide, I think, would be really beneficial for all the local kinship programs on the line today. 
Yeah, definitely. And that, uh, again, is a county decision to be made. However, we could help with that conversation if a kinship um, non foster home wanted to become foster parents with that conversation with the county. Fantastic. I think that that's uh, extremely helpful. So uh, thank you for that. Well, we're going to keep you as a contact. I know I will. Um, Absolutely. And a lot of our folks will as well. So, well, thank you very much for your time, Lauren. For everybody on the line, thank you for joining us. Um, please join us in person next month in Albany for our Kinship Care Month event. If you have any questions about the event um, or today's webinar, please feel free to reach out directly to me and have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you.